Every culture or group of people has a story to tell. African Americans are no different. We too have a story, a proud story, a history of survival and success. The identity of black America rests partly in the story of our tremendous struggle to survive. I don't need to tell you that we have had enormous challenges and obstacles to overcome. Relying on the strength of our cultural heritage, African Americans seek a brighter future for ourselves and our children. The life of a people is an educational presentation created by Right to Life of Michigan in collaboration with Dayton Right to Life to help identify the not so obvious challenges and obstacles placed in our path today. This may be new information for you and I know you'll probably have questions and that's great. But I have a request. That is that you hold your questions until the end so we can get through this presentation in an efficient and timely manner. Okay. The threats to the African American community are numerous and varied. I don't think anyone would argue with the poverty, that poverty is a real threat. Many in the black community are experiencing economic oppression and hardship, especially in our nation's larger cities. Just pick up a newspaper or listen to the radio or TV. Crime and violence runs rampant in our city streets. How many young black men are now locked up in prison? Drugs, alcohol, and the crime that goes with them, substance abuse strikes at the heart of too many black families. HIV, AIDS, continues to be a threat to all America, but in particular to the African American who are the most affected more than any other racial group or ethnic group. Infant mortality among black babies from birth up to one year old is tragic tragically high, especially in Detroit. And the breakdown of the traditional black family, how many black households are now headed by single mothers or grandparents. The husband and fathers are missing from the home and that has taken a great toll on our black youth. But do you know what the leading cause of death is among African Americans? It is abortion. We have tragically aborted over 17 million unborn black babies in this country since the Supreme Court ruling of Roe v. Wade gave women the right to choose abortion in 1973. Before that, it was illegal in the United States. Over 17 million unborn black babies have been aborted in those 40 years. Talk about a national tragedy. Over 17 million black babies that have been aborted. Every day in the United States, we abort more than 3,000 unborn babies of all races. That totals up to 1.2 million abortions each year. That's more than 55 million unborn babies of all races in the past 40 years. But African American women have disproportionately numbered numbers of abortions. 
In fact, 37% of all abortions are performed on black women. But blacks represent only 13% of the general population. Something is definitely wrong. Because the increased number of abortions among blacks, the impact on the community is sobering. More than 360 unborn black babies die each year as a result of legalized abortion. That's roughly, that's the roughly the combined Michigan population of Bay City, Grand Rapids, Muskegon, and Dearborn all combined. Over 17 million unborn black babies were never given the chance at life. We aborted over 17 million. Did you know that every day in our country, over 1,000 black women make the choice to abort their unborn children? Every single day. Since abortions were first tracked in Michigan beginning in 1980, there have been a total of 1,040,595 occurrences of induced abortion for all races. In 2010, there was a total of 23,307, and in 2011, a slight increase with 23,366 abortions. Black women continue to have a higher percentage of abortions than any other race or ethnic group in the state. In fact, 47% of all abortions. It's important to understand how abortion has affected the black population in Michigan. In 2010, there were 10,016 reported induced abortions for black women. Newly released statistics show that 10,729 black abortions were reported in 2011, an increase of 713. Women of all races and ethnic backgrounds have often chosen abortion because they don't think they have any other option. Of course, we know that that is not the case. But perception is often times reality. The truth of the matter is that 95% of black women having abortions are not married. It's hard not to see the glaring absence of a man and father in these numbers. Nearly 21% of black women having abortions have had one or more abortions in the past. In 2011, that says 2,253 black women had a repeat abortion in Michigan. 36.4% of Michigan abortions involving black women in 2011 fell within the 20 to 24 age range. The next highest grouping is black women 25 to 29 years old. They are responsible for 23.2% of black abortions in the state. So what do we do with these numbers? Simply stated, it means that our people are not thriving. Our children are not getting a chance at life. The choice we make to abort our unborn children has consequences. Did you know that blacks are no longer the largest minority in the United States? From 1990 to 2000, the African American population was larger than Hispanic. But from 2000 to 2011, the Hispanic community grew by more than 19 million people, 12.2 million larger than blacks. 
Hispanics are now the largest minority in the United States. Unfortunately, abortion has played a significant role in the reversal of these population figures. The numbers here show that even though other races and ethnic groups are having abortions in Michigan, <coughs> unmarried black women are having the highest percentage of abortions. In fact, 8.6% more than whites. The fact is we abort more of our unborn children than any other racial group. Why is that? This growing trend of more abortions in the black community is not an accident. African Americans have been targeted by population control groups that believe some people should not be allowed to have children. That people of color and the poor are a big part of the overpopulation problem and they need to be managed. There's no disguising that bigotry and racism has raised its ugly head. Take, for example, the abortion practices of Planned Parenthood clinics. The organization's name is misleading. Planned Parenthood is the largest abortion provider in the country. In 2011, there are 750 clinics reported 334,000 abortions. In 2010, 2011, they received 542 million in government funding. Tax dollars, your money. Where are many of the Planned Parenthood abortion clinics located? In minority neighborhoods and near co college campuses. If you're not familiar with the name Margaret Sanger, you need to be. She was one of 11 children who later came to equate large families with economic poverty. She was very interested in the practice of eugenics. According to the Merriman-Webster Dictionary, eugenics is, quote, a science that deals with the improvement as by control of human mating of hereditary qualities of race or breed, end quote. Sanger embraced this movement wholeheartedly. She believed in the promotion of quality, not quantity. When it came to her subjective list of undesirable human beings, Margaret Singer was also the founder of Planned Parenthood. Think again, where are many Planned Parenthood abortion clinics located? In minority neighborhoods and near college campuses. The Religious Coalition for Reproduction is another disturbing group that you will want to become aware of. Their goal is to infiltrate the black church with a message that traditional Bible teaching about abortion and sexuality are wrong. Pastors and teens are the target of this group. Pastors are some of the most influential people in the black community. Young girls and women are those most likely to fall prey to abortion due to unexpected pregnancies. It's no surprise that this group uses twisted scriptures to promote their pro-abortion message, stating abortion rights are biblically grounded. Nothing could be further from the truth. We face untold threats and consequences because people have been convinced fooled that choice is more important than a child. In the womb, we are the most innocent and the most vulnerable to someone else's choice. 
At the moment of conception, when the egg and the sperm unite, we have life. A new human being, a child created in the image and the likeness of God has been given life. It's always, always a miraculous event. Did you know this unborn child has a heartbeat at 21 days? That less than one month, that is less than one month, a woman doesn't even suspect that she's pregnant yet. At 42 days, brain waves can be detected. Even though we use the absence of brain waves to determine if someone is legally dead, the presence of brain waves in an unborn child does not legally establish them as being alive. Something wrong with that logic. At 56 days, all the organs of the body are formed. The mother is only two months alone and not even close to showing. But her baby is fully formed and only needs time to grow. Abortion is a violent act. It ends the life of a tiny and defenseless unborn child because that's what it was designed to do. What I'm about to show you are two very graphic pictures of what choice in our country has become. Abortion is ugly and shocking. These will be difficult for you to look at, but I encourage you to see for yourself what a woman's right to choose looks like. Here, a pregnant mother made the choice to abort her unborn child when she was five months pregnant. This is not a pretty picture. It's the horrible truth laid before your eyes and it happens more than 3,000 times each day in this country. If we feel the need to look away from this violence, then perhaps we need to do something to put an end to abortion. The right to choose has been expanded to such an extreme that babies can now be killed even when they are more born than unborn. You're looking at partial birth abortion, a totally inhumane procedure where the baby is pulled feet first from the mother's womb and birthed except for the head. The abortionist then jams a pair of surgical scissors into the back of the baby's skull to open a hole. Sticks in the suction tube, sucks out the brain to collapse the head and delivers the baby dead. Before the federal partial birth abortion ban in April of 2007, this procedure occurred more than 5,000 times a year in our country. While federal and Michigan legislation bans this procedure, pro-life groups are concerned partial birth abortions are still being performed by abortionists who no longer fear being prosecuted by federal authorities. Now ask yourself, what has choice become? Definitely a six letter word that's code for abortion. But, it's, but it also means violent death, broken families, injured women, and devalued society. But nobody's talking about abortion in the African American community. Why? What are they telling us? They're not telling us that abortion is a choice with consequences. It affects the woman for a lifetime. 
that there are over 100 physical and emotional consequences for women who have had an abortion. Physically, they can suffer from infection, dangerous blood loss, future difficulties getting pregnant, and even death. Emotionally, they can suffer from stress, depression, lack of sex drive, inability to trust men, and damaged self-esteem. The suicide rate among post-abortive women is up to nine times higher than among women in general. Black women face even further risks. Although breast cancer is a threat to all women, did you know that breast cancer is even more deadly among black women? It's true. Tragically, abortion makes the risk even higher. One study out of Howard University found that black women who abort their first pregnancy have a 2.8 to 4.7 times greater risk of developing breast cancer. But abortion affects more people than just women and babies. There are usually other children born who are missing brothers and sisters, men who want to raise their child and stop the abortion, they have no legal right, they can do nothing. Husbands and fathers who did not defend the life of their child often come to know guilt and remorse for their decision and or inaction in later years. Loving grandparents and other family members who pressure a girl or a young woman into an abortion often mourn the loss of the child that was part of their family tree. Well-meaning friends giving advice often aid and encourage a woman or teen to have an abortion only to understand later that abortion also haunts people who have never had one themselves. Let's be clear, however. Abortion is a moral wrong. It is not a God-given right. In our country, legal and moral, moral are not always the same thing. Some laws are just not good laws. They can be unjust and oppress those who are disadvantaged and vulnerable. Abortion victimizes and harms women. It does not liberate them. Abortion kills our unborn children, over 17 million African Americans since 1973. Abortion devalues our families. There are huge branches of the family tree that no one will ever know. Abortion cheapens life. It basically says that life has no or little value. Abortion steals from our people and our future. If children are our greatest resource, then our futures are being stolen. Who have we lost to abortion in the African American community since 1973? The next Martin Luther King Jr., the next me, the next Bishop Bradley, the next Diane Brookins. Who have we lost? We'll never know. So now, what do we do with all this information? We believe that we get down on our knees and we pray and we ask God for his love and his mercy. We ask him to heal our people. And then we get up and we get involved. We need to teach and promote the value of life at every opportunity. People don't know what you've just learned. Who's going to tell them if you don't? Reach out to those in an unplanned pregnancy because 
It's not enough to tell the woman to have the child and walk away. We need to surround her with help and hope so she can make the right choice for life. We need to be ready to minister to women and men hurting from abortion. And our job is not to judge, but to let them know we serve a loving and a merciful God who is ready to forgive and heal your pain, their pain, our pain. We need to educate others on the health risks of abortion. How many women know about the abortion breast cancer link or the 100 physical and emotional consequences of a post-abortive woman? We need to promote abstinence among our young people. Thankfully, there are many different abstinence programs currently in place throughout the United States. This is where young adults have the right to choose the choice of whether or not to have sex in the first place. We are fortunate in this area to have Compassion Pregnancy who has a wonderful abstinence program. We need to take advantage of this. And finally, pray boldly and always that God will bless our work and allow us to see his hand with an end to the needless killing of our unborn children. Abortion is a destructive solution that is always the wrong choice. A choice that is not worthy of a woman. As I mentioned when I began the presentation, I would be pleased to take your questions and provide some additional material. We, we have a lot of tables set up. There's all kind of material, all kind of information available to you tonight. Uh, and if not today, we're available all the time. There are those of us that have given our life to this. There's the address, there's the, the website, call the numbers, reach out and get involved. Amen. Thank you for your attention.